Okay, I'd like to bring this meeting to order. The Village of Villa Park Board of Trustees Committee of the Whole Meeting, October 9th, 2023. Put Konecki, please call the roll. Trustee Alfano. Here. Trustee Cordova. Here. Trustee Corkery. Trustee Kosar. Trustee Kumar. Trustee Patrick. President Casone. Here. And we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Trustee Corkery will not be here tonight. He got called them to work. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 Um, we do not have a quorum. However, we can still proceed with the Committee of the Whole. And we will be discussing the zoning and entitlement process. And we will turn it over to our Director of Community and Economic Development, Mark McLaughlin. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so this evening I have a little presentation here to go over the fantastic conversation of zoning and then the entitlement process that goes along with it. And so this is basically to give an overview to the board, and to everyone that's paying attention at home or watching this later, um, what does it mean to get zoning accomplished? What does the entitlement process mean? Um, you know, from I, I'm interested in doing something in the village, how do I get there? And so I've got a little presentation, it's called The Legend of Zoning and the Entitlement Process. <laughs> There it is. Thank you. <laughs> you need some like background music. <laughs> yes. Um, so first off, what is zoning? So zoning is the rules that regulate a property, um, what that owner can or cannot do on it or with it. Um, and that is um, through zoning districts. So in our zoning ordinance, which is in our code of ordinances, it outlines a bunch of different districts. Uh, Villa Park has 16 of them that are broken into separate categories. Um, residential, commercial, office, industrial, and then the MX, um, the mixed use districts. Um, <clears throat> in the zoning ordinance is also a use chart, which then tells you, all right, these are the different uses on the left, and then the zoning districts are on the top, and there's a little black circle that says either it's allowed by right in that zoning district, an S that says it's a special use in that district, or a dash, which means nope, you cannot do this in that particular district. You can't even ask for relief, and the relief would be the special use. And the other thing that um, to, to regulate zoning is the bulk chart, and that's the document that establishes what the lot size, the setbacks, building height, lot coverage, all those physical things that you see on a, on a site plan, the bulk chart is what we use to regulate all that. And again, they're all different per which zoning district you're in. A residential zoning setback is, on a side yard is six feet, but in a com some commercial districts is zero because you want buildings touching each other as you're walking down a street. So it really depends on what district you are, which has a different um, bulk chart. This is where you guys get involved. You guys uh, approve ordinances after they've gone through planning and zoning and obviously staff review and all that. And you've seen a bunch of these terms and I just want to go over what they are and, and how we get there, right? So zoning map amendment, also referred to as rezoning. Um, this is a change from one district to another. Every parcel needs an underlying zoning district. We'll get back to that later. Uh, additionally, then there's a variation. That is a change in the bulk requirements. Um, you've seen a couple of these as of late. Side yard setback is six foot, but the building's at five. That would have been a one foot variation for the difference. Front yard setback, 25, they're at 18. The difference, that's the variation. Um, a special use. This is again in that use chart when a proposed use is required to be a special use. Example, a fueling station, also known as a gas station, is a special use in the C3 commercial district. It's not allowed by right. You have to go through the special use process. And that's because we need to look at that site specific for that particular use, make sure the site plan makes sense, traffic patterns make sense. There, there's an additional review process that needs to go through in order for that use at the end to work appropriately. 
And then we've got a plan development, which is a special, special use. Plan developments are a special use. They are not a standalone thing. They are part of the special use process. Um, and this is for that you cannot follow a strict application of the zoning district requirements. And this is when the project usually is so unique that there's so many variations that you don't do that. I'm not going to ask for 14 variations to get this. Thing. No, it's a plan development. And then it becomes the give and take approach. They want to do this special thing that's so awesome. Well, then if we're quote unquote giving them things that aren't allowed by right in the code, what is in the exchange? So examples are if the building height wants to be increased beyond you know what is normally allowed, we're gonna increase the <coughs> landscaping on the ground level to make it more pedestrian friendly and more inviting because you're giving the height, let's make it better on the, on the ground floor. Um, or a density increase. Um, we've seen this one where we're gonna allow more density than what is normally allowed for our code, but there's gonna be a public private partnership to have public parking spaces on the first floor. Um, those are just two examples, but there are many, many examples built within uh, <coughs> plan developments. Just quick, how many PUDs yeah. do we have? Do you know in Villa Park? We don't, and that's one of the issues actually that um, staff and I are gonna be working on next year is actually mapping all of our special uses, variations, and plan developments. Right now, I cannot to answer that. Um, so that is one of the projects that you'll see in our budget narrative actually to accomplish next year. Okay. Um, so we can actually get them visually on a map so everybody can understand that property's got a plan development and then here's the ordinance that ties back to it. Yeah. Oh. That's what I was saying. I would like a visual map. Absolutely. Yeah, not a one. Much preferred. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so here's some other requests that are go through the entitlement process that aren't specifically zoning. Uh, the first one is a zoning text amendment. So this is when we are proposing to change the actual code. This can only be requested by the village. A property owner cannot file a petition to to change the zoning ordinance, the actual meat of it. Um, this can only be initiated by the village. Predominantly, it's done by staff. Um, an administrative adjustment. This is like a junior variation. So there's only seven particular requests that are allowed, and then there is no public hearing process. It's still a formal application. It's staff-led, and then the director, myself, has the final determination on this particular request. And there's only seven which are like, you know, less than 10% of a side yard setback, um, that kind of stuff. A plat of subdivision. Not a true zoning process, but it's usually required as part of any of the entitlements. And you're gonna start seeing these come uh, through more and more as, as we continue to do more development the appropriate way in Villa Park. Um, so what a plat of subdivision can do, it can subdivide, take one lot and make it two. It can consolidate, take two lots and make it one. It can vacate. You have an alley or right away that's not being used. It can turn it into a taxable parcel or it can dedicate. We have a taxable parcel and we need a right away there. We're gonna dedicate that to the village for right away purposes. Those are the four things that the, the plats are, are doing and they can all do those all at the same time. <laughs> um, annexations, uh, we had one of these last year. We're gonna have another one coming up. On an annexation, a plat is required and an annexation agreement is encouraged but not required. So depending on the scale and the scope of the project, the agreement puts in all the terms that the village is willing to accept that property as is, because sometimes there's already something on it, a non-conforming structure or a use that we're willing to accept but doesn't meet our, our code specifically. So the agreement lays out all the, the terms that are willing to take you. Um, but if it's a very simple, straightforward. We annexed the small portion of the Arrow property last year. No annexation agreement because we already knew what was happening. Everything was good. No agreement was necessary. And then finally on here, I have redevelopment agreements. So this is uh, a required document that if we're making any financial incentives regarding any TIF, um, business development uh, tax or uh, in that area, or it's in lieu of an annexation agreement. You can only do an annexation agreement when you annex something, but you can do a redevelopment agreement um, if you need to negotiate some certain terms on a property that's already in the building. <clears throat> and so the actual entitlement process, how do you actually get all those things that I just listed out, right? 
It's a multi-phase process, but it doesn't have to include every phase depending on what they're asking for. So every request is, is usually unique, right? Um, it could include multiple requests at the same time. So you can, let me see if this skips back. I had a problem with it, there we go. You could be asking for a zoning map amendment, a variation, a special use, a plat of subdivision, and an annexation all with one project. It just really depends on what that particular petitioner is trying to accomplish. And so then staff and I will work with them. You need this, 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 and this. Submit for all of it and we will review all of it together at the same time as one cohesive project. Varying degrees of length, length equaling time to obtain those entitlements because there's a process which we're gonna get into. Every project has the potential to be unique. So I was, I'm going to see, you're gonna see unique coming through round and around. And then I've broken it down into four phases and this is the four you know, milestones, right? You've got the concept, the petition, the permitting, and then the construction of said project. Step one, phase one, if you will, concept. This is the first time that a property owner, a builder, whoever, I label it as IP, interested party, uh, discusses ideas with staff. This is the first time we hear about anything, right? Starts off usually with the conversation, I'm thinking about doing, and then they fill in the blank. I'm thinking about opening a business. I'm thinking about relocating. I'm thinking about doing an addition. 4,000 different potential scenarios, I'm thinking about. This is also the least clear step out of all of the entire process because there's so much I don't know going into it. It also has the greatest degree of time uncertainty because step two on here is that that interested party finds a property and negotiates and signs a contract with the property owner. They might not be the property owner. I want to buy a, buy a building and start a restaurant. Awesome. Where? I don't know. Where can I do it? Go back to the zoning districts, I'll tell you where you can do a restaurant, and then they go out to the free market and go and find something that is either for sale or for lease, and they have to actually negotiate that. That takes time. Um, this is most variable and the highest fail rate. The number of times I've met with somebody to never hear from them again is very high. This is also where all the rumors come from. I heard we're getting a... Uh, we're not, we're not getting that, whatever it is. Because we meet with so many people, they go out and they look at properties. The neighbor hears, hey, there's a guy next door looking at the property, what are they doing? Uh, they were looking at this. Oh, that means we're getting a new sushi bar? That were... No, 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 this is step week number one. Staff meets with, <laughs> with the interested party, week one. So much, so many times do I get back a couple months later, hey, I heard, whatever happened to, yeah, they died. It died. It never happened. They couldn't find anyone. They went somewhere else. Who knows? Yeah. When when they come and ask you, yeah. So in the concept, is there a something get that 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 gets started like a file or? So at concept, this is. There's no formal file started at concept. Got it. Because <coughs> nothing. There's no decision making. It's no. Just, hey. This is all. Feel good, warm and fuzzy. These are all the terms that get used around with brokers and real estate people. They're going to vet the vet staff and vet out the village before they commit any real dollars. That's what's going on here. I have a question. Yeah, Does absolutely. anybody already buy a property and then come to you? Yes. I would f figure there's quite a few of those. Yes, too. they do that too. And I'm trying to get the community, especially the brokers in the area, to stop doing that. Because what is happening is that they buy this they want to start something you know, right away and they don't have the zoning rights. That use chart has a dash that says, nope, I can't even go through the special use process. That's the worst case scenario. The other one is your use requires a special use and we'll get into the petition process. You can't open tomorrow. So yeah, no, I highly encourage people to come and speak to the village in any village, if you guys are watching, first, Go there first and get the answers that you that you need. Am I allowed to do this here? Yes, no, maybe so. So, but uh, to continue on, no, there's no formal application. This is just a meeting with staff. Let's just talk it through. Um, many times this is, I'm looking at three different sites, um, you know, pros and cons. I'm, we're, staff is giving that interested party as much information as they could possibly to go negotiate, get a good deal, 
and, and start the process. So once they do that, then they, um, staff will do a side review, not, you know, I've got a site plan, I'm thinking about doing this. Would this work before I commit? We will absolutely do that. It's not a formal letter. It doesn't have a petition number that time. It's still getting them information so they can go make a good project happen. Um, and then if they are committed, then if it requires a full-blown you know, demo and a new building and a new build, they actually have to go and prepare all those preliminary engineering, architectural, site plan, landscaping. They have to go and actually prepare all of that stuff. And that's in the, the bottom blue, which is six to eight to 12 weeks, depending on the scope of the project. Yes, everything on here I calculated basically starting as a, a redevelopment project, by the way. This is not always the case, as I said, everything's unique. But if you're doing a redevelopment, old building needs to be demoed, new building coming in, that's the timeline that I'm showing you right now, by the way. If everything's good, they got all the work, yeah. Is there any liability to, or culpability maybe, with the village? Um, not suggesting you've done it, but your predecessors certainly have, where they've said, sure, you can do this, you can do that. People go and buy whatever it is that they want to buy, and then they come back, and then they say, oh, yeah, uh, I didn't look deep enough into it, and you can't do that anymore. Yeah. So liability, no, there isn't. Um, do I feel good if I did that? No way. I mean, that, but I don't operate at a standard like that. I mean, I, we have full on meetings and then there is the full, if we tell someone you have to go through the zoning process, the actual per, the petition to get zoning, that's when any of the nuance is caught. But a full, you're allowed by right, oh, it turns out you're not, yeah, that, we, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. The Illinois. Oh, so yeah. The short immunity. Yeah, I know that's be applicable yeah. in that situation. No, I, uh, yeah, I was immunity for the mm -hmm. municipality and its employees. I'd be more in my own personal, professionally. That's a huge mistake on my behalf. But we don't operate that way. That's yeah. good to hear. Yeah, I, I know. We're, we're tired of that. In <laughs> yeah, no, it's not good for anybody. Yeah. Um, I uh, wanted to ask about, we talk about liability and stuff like that, and they brought up a good point about a kind of keeping track of who comes to you and their basic ideas. We should probably just keep it, track of it just from an infor informative perspective. So at I see that you have some tracking, otherwise you wouldn't have this graph. Um, or is it just kind of an as a guesstimation? No, yeah, this is with the experience that I have on what it goes down. I actually don't want to track this. I don't want to have this information. This is when deals are made or deals are die. Because if I release some confidential information that a guy is using to negotiate a contract, I don't want to be the responsible party for that. Not from the tort immunity, from I don't want to mess up a deal that we could have gotten because I said something that I shouldn't have said to the next guy. If a property goes for sale, I don't want to, because once I keep track, it's foidable. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. You know what I mean? So, until, they, I mean until they formally submit, I don't keep any of their stuff. So they hand me stuff all the time, I throw it away right away. Or I turn it back to them. Uh, so when they come to talk to you, you don't keep any notes on that? I, notes are different. But and, you know, they'll have a, a sketch or their business plan and all that stuff that they're trying to sell me. And I'll say, yeah, thank you. Great. Here's the zoning requirements that you're going to need. Here's uh, what you're going to have to do. You're going to need a permit. Um, but remember, most of these people die. I never I hear from them ever again. No, I, I mean, yeah, so, I realize that that's any any process of anything developing mm -hmm. you know, from, you know, the Q-tips to anything else yeah. is has that same process. Most yeah. of the ideas die exactly. and they yeah. don't work. And so that's 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 understood. Yeah. That doesn't mean there's value. I mean, there's 20 billion ideas that come out and maybe three come out positive, exactly. That's right? exactly what this is. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. So that I understand, but how do we know how many billion? Do you keep track of the people who nope. come it's to you? It's so frequent. No, there's. I don't see. You know, again, doing this. Geez, twenty years. The failures. I don't need to keep record of. I need to know what succeeded. Some there's so many random ideas. 
You don't want to sit in some of those meetings. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I mean, we can I, never I mean, get that accomplished. And it's 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 holding on to some paper document or some email for as administrative correspondence for a year what? that I don't that isn't valuable. No, I mean you don't need to know if the idea was good or not or even keep track of the idea but I feel like you need to know how many people run through your doors because these are hours right that you spend talking to multiple people to know what is the benefit and what is the loss I mean that's the basic benefit and loss of your job oh I mean yeah <laughs> I mean, if you want to run it as a metric, that's a different animal. Yeah, that's but, what I'm talking yeah. about. A metric. That's, yeah, I mean, not, you're going to you know, how many That's people? a completely different conversation. <laughs> yeah. All the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah, but. Yeah, because yeah, after a while, I mean, you get, I get calls all the time. You know, yeah. What do you think about the, you know, can I do this? And, uh, you know, would, I mean, come it's, on paper. It's, it's you know, good you know. to know how many calls come through because people, it, it, one, it tells the world, <clears throat> okay. This is never an easy process, but we're there for you, and I've been there for you. And that, 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 that information is important, not so much what exactly their idea is, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, so that's a that's some, different that, discussion this, this regarding different, management. This, yeah, management <laughs> but, yeah. discussion, right. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Carrie, so this did is, you have something? Well, I was just ask, I'm going oh, yeah. to ask uh, Trustee Kumar if she meant just like a tally system. Yeah, just tally, how many, like yeah. just, oh, somebody called, check. Somebody called, check. Yeah. That's all I was Pretty saying. much, yeah. yeah. Somebody called, check. Got it. Yeah. And these are the projects at the end. So I talked to 20,000 people and three <laughs> said yes. <laughs> three. Right. Yay. Right. Um, I'm, better, I'm doing better now because four said yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is the concept. This is constantly churning and burning, always meeting with people every time a property especially commercial industrial goes on the market we get a, a, a big influx right across the street is an example I've met with four different individuals about one property because I went on the market for one month so just it happens all the time so that's the concept if somebody decides to move forward one of those three right they decide to move forward they prepare their planning and zoning applications and their documents they have now entered the petition phase actually filing a petition with the village for a zoning request. They need something to get their project off the ground, right? This is the most regimented step out of all the four. It is a clear and concise process. It is dialed in, mostly because it's tied to state statute requirements for notification for a public hearing. Um, the degree of time of uncertainty on this one rests on the petitioner. So on the next slide, I'll show you the actual planning and zoning submittal calendar, which dials in the entire process. Staff meets every single one of our deadlines, and when the petitioner has two weeks to return a comment letter, especially if it's an engineering one, they will take as much time as they need, and that's okay, because then they're gonna resubmit when they're ready, and we'll pop them back in the calendar as needed. Uh, at the end of this phase, zoning rights are granted. So when they're done here, the village board has passed an ordinance for one, two, seven, eight of those things on the first two slides. And they now have the rights to, to move forward and, and do what they'd like to do. And then many projects actually never need this phase. We're running 15 to 20 petitions annually right now for the last couple of years. So we issue in the next one, 22,000 permits. Only 15 to 22 of those needed some sort of zoning approval. So, uh, going up to the number of weeks, this is approximately a 12-week process if they are really dialed in. If they're, if it's done by usually not a mom and pop shop, right? Totally fine. We'll hold their hand. We'll walk them through the process every time. They hire a zoning attorney and file all the paperwork and have a Fortune 500 engineer. There's Time is money to them. They're going to get this done in approximately 12 weeks, right? We work with all facets of them, and it's okay. Interested party, resubmittal, staff, re-review. Two weeks, two weeks. Two weeks, two weeks. Staff will always get our review done in two weeks. We have internal deadlines to ensure that. I'm going to take this point to introduce Stephanie. She's our planner. I know some of you have not formally met her, but she is here. She is the bulldog behind the scenes to make sure that everybody hits all these deadlines. 
<laughs> it may not have been the uh, no. the analogy she was going for. <laughs> it's, 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 it's endearing. Um, so then when we get it back to them, it's on the petitioner. If it's an engineer who's running the process because that happens often or the attorney, it's we're expecting them to return in two weeks. If that doesn't happen, that's okay. This, I'm waiting for it, there we go. This is the submittal calendar. This is what we live and breathe by for the Planning and Zoning Commission. Planning and Zoning Commission, here's the majority, not all, but the majority of those eight things that we had at the beginning to make a recommendation to the village board who is final authority on the majority of the stuff. That's why the Planning and Zoning is in that gray column. That's the one that dictates everything. From that date, we just work backwards. Notifications to the newspaper and sign. State statute requirement needs to be 15 to 30 days published and on site before planning and zoning. All right, well then I'm gonna work behind that in order to establish when I can send out those things, I need to have the project approved by staff. Staff means community economic development, public works, parks and recreation if there's a, a parks component, um, fire, has a review on it for fire apparatus turning um, life safety. Police gets a, con uh, a copy of the plan set if they have any additional comments. So it's a full village staff review that we get accomplished in two weeks and send out to them. So as an example, top left corner, we just updated this because you guys just approved the calendar. So we just updated it. Last Friday, October 6, 2023 was a submittal date. Did we receive any submittals? So if you walk through Everybody would assume, oh great, there's going to be no December Planning and Zoning Commission. Not true, because all the ones that we're already working on right now have to work through the process as well, that if they miss their deadline, they go from, okay, staff reviews letter, resubmit by this date, oh, they missed it. Okay, that's cool, let's just drop down one. And then, oh, they missed it again, that's cool, no worry, let's just drop down one. We're still working on ones and reviewing ones that have missed their deadlines, which is fine, that are gonna submit, that hopefully I will be able to then plug them in on their calendar, their old last year's calendar, for a December Planning and Zoning Commission. So we are constantly and being very fluid with where those projects are from a date perspective. Once we get it out, we've met our deadline, and then it is on the petitioner to move forward and go on. So that's why on the calendar, it could be 12 weeks if they're rock solid, or we could be all the way out here if it takes a couple times, right? So I will also say I've never seen a 100% perfectly accurate application. It just doesn't exist. <laughs> After you guys have passed your ordinance, we move on to permits. So they have their zoning rights, everything's good. They're either gonna final engineer, um, go to construction drawings for um, the building they're gonna build, and that is right here in that orange, those, that first section right, oh, come on, don't lag. That first section right there. They prepare their final plans, whatever that may be. And then they submit for the building permit. Again, now staff does a review. Get back corrections, do a review. Get back corrections, get back review. Again, we're on a two week cycle for that, um, and if that, is really goes really well. That's about 13 weeks, which includes though them preparing their final documentation. That's not 13 weeks in the village's hands. That's 13 weeks from when they have full rights to move forward with the project. Many builders, developers do not like to spend real money. Final development plans are in the six figure range. They don't want to spend that sort of engineering dollars unless they know the village board has given them the ability to move forward. It's a risk reward thing. They would much rather take a little bit of time, a delay by call it four to six weeks, instead of spending 150 to $250,000 on final engineering. Could, happens, and that's perfectly okay. Could you give some examples of questions that could be answered once you've gone through the final design process, which you could not answer when, at the preliminary design process? Things like, does it have one of these? Does it have one of those? Yeah, so like a, a special use. They are special. You, you as the board takes the planning and zoning recommendation, either to recommend to approve or to recommend to deny a special use. Um, every gas station is a special use, essentially. So will they spend that extra level of engineering for environmental, for undergrounds, for storm, until they know that it's allowed? 
I can't answer that. I, yeah, go ahead. Don't worry about it. No. <laughs> no. No, they don't have the rights to move forward. So anything that goes with it's not, man, this is a slam dunk. This is just a technical. We need to just get this. Anything that requires any sort of real analysis of a site-specific design, I can't, I can't even encourage them to spend a couple bucks. So they'll know that they need tanks underground for gasoline, but they may not know exactly where or yeah. why because yeah. they have to find out that they have the right before they start doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there's a ton of due diligence that they've already done, but mm -hmm. the diligence is on the front end. Um, that usually happens between concept and the petition phase, soils, environmental phase one, um, geotech, just bunch of other stuff and if they draw a pretty picture thinking this might be where we put the yeah. tank you have to understand that's just a pretty picture. pretty picture yeah. yeah until it's engineered it's just that pretty picture um, so now we're on to permits this is the second most regimented step um, very similar because they submit an application we have a deadline to get it back they uh, have it's an open-ended deadline because we don't set a deadline because there's no um, there's no notification process in this one like there is in the planning and zoning. So it's whenever you get it back to us. Okay? Yeah. So you're saying only 20 of these actually are going to go, 20, 15 to 20 go through planning and zoning? Yes. But 2,200, I mean, mainly it's only about 1% you get through yeah. planning and zoning. Everything right. else is they already have the space. It is the space that's correct. Yes and no, but yes. Yeah, they much. only need a permit. That's what this is saying. So... 15 to 20 need some sort of zoning, a variation, a special use, a, a zoning district change, a map amendment. 15 to 20 of those annually, right? 2,200, so yes, the math, right? Whatever that percentage is, yeah. they just need a permit. This also includes fence permits. This includes roofs. This includes interior remodels. We issue 2,200 permits, but they all follow the same process. Submit, review. And this is 2,200 permits annually for, annually for businesses or what? For no. everyone? Yeah, the village. Yeah, so the village in general. So even if I want to put a, fan, uh, a, a gazebo in the back of my yard right. and I need a permit, that's part of this 20. Correct. And every permit has a zoning review. Every single one of them has a zoning review. It goes across it Stephanie's desk that says, all right, we're going to look at that bulk chart. Does the, what you're requesting meet all the requirements of the bulk chart? Yes, no. No, all right, now let's talk about can you move it? Is it in an appropriate location? Or do we have to go through a variation process or something along those lines? Or an administrative adjustment process? Is it already built and you didn't get a permit in the first place? A very, very common conversation. So we're trying to avoid all that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this permit, or this process, very similar. Um, Review, resubmit, review. The degree of uncertainty rests on those design professionals, the architect, the engineer, um, sometimes the contractor. Um, and then the rights to build are granted at the end of this phase. Once they have the permit issued, now you can go start constructing. And as we just discussed, about 2,200 annually. I have a question about fences. So you yeah. put in a fence. Mm -hmm. You already had a fence. Mm -hmm. Is that a permittable? You, do you have to get a permit for Absolutely. That? Yes, right? Yep. Okay. 100%. After you have gotten a permit issued, you are going to construct your project. This is the longest phase out of all of them. You are also about halfway through from a time perspective. This is weeks 54 to 105. A full brand new development. We have existing building that's past its useful life. It needs to be torn down. We need to put in appropriate stormwater. We then have to connect it to utilities. Um, and then we're gonna do a building foundation. Building foundation is in yellow. That is all, what is that? 12 weeks into when I've issued a permit. This is part of the disconnect from the, the general population who's not in this field. And that's all, obviously a lot of people. I was at planning and zoning why don't I see a building going up? <laughs> well, you don't see a building going up because in that time we reviewed building permits and then we've issued them. Well, you issued a permit, why don't I see anything happening? Well, because it takes a long time to actually get that hole in the ground. You need to put an underground stormwater, pipes, nothing that's vertical. 
it's all flat, right? And if you've got a fence around it, you probably don't even see what's happening on the site. But it's 12 weeks of, of activity, but that building's not going vertical for a while. Once you dig a hole, pour some concrete, it has to cure, and then that's two weeks, and then you start going up. The up is the building rough with inspections. That is in the, what is it on there? Fuchsia? Mm. Mauve? The middle one, the middle long one. <laughs> Slightly different on the projector color than on my laptop color. Um, that is that is getting your building under roof. That is getting your rough electric, your rough plumbing, your rough tr all your trades. Um, that is the biggest part of it with all the inspections. So if we're doing an apartment building, that is the rough for 50 units, it, which is basically the equivalent of 50 homes. Um, so it's a very long but required process. And once you finish with the roughs, you move on to your finals. Um, your finals is everything outside of the drywall, right? Roughs are good, okay, now you can drywall. Now you can side, now you can Pour a foundation, or sorry, pour a, um, a driveway. You can do all those other things, right? Question? No. Okay. Um, um, simultaneous, but usually at the end, is the final on the site, the site itself. So again, with a new project has, which has a landscape plan, landscaping should not go in at the front because they're just going to drive all over and kill everything. You landscape it at the end. You do your signage, your permanent monument signage at the end. That's in the green. It's all the final site stuff, your final lift on your parking lot, striping, ADA, all those other things that are full part of this permit process, but it's its own phase. Um, and then finally, at the very, very end, at week 105, is that you get a certificate of occupancy for that new building. You can actually move into it. And one of the things, yeah. this is obvious, but just to, to reiterate it, that yeah, the or, or the yellow goldenrod or whatever yeah. step and Foundation. the dusty peach, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yes. Those those peach. yeah, so those, those steps and also the green one are very seasonal dependent. Absolutely. Welcome to Chicago. Yes. You can only plant landscaping <clears throat> at certain times. You can only pour concrete at certain times. So, yes. Um, I've built in this little magical phase here for perfect seasonality. <laughs> <laughs> But it's Villa Park. It's always yeah, it's Villa Park. Don't worry. It's always it doesn't snow or rain here. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's fine. There's, there's a song about it. Uh, so after construction, you got a CO. California. Excellent. You can now open your business. You can have your tenants move in if you're, or if you're a house, you can move into your home, or if you're a condo, whatever. You can actually occupy certificate of occupancy. You can occupy that new thing you just built. Bonus phase. From a commercial standpoint. When are they going to open? I don't know. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the village. This is, we have quite a few corporate entities on uh, North and Roosevelt, and then they move in, and they get their CO, and then their grand opening is scheduled at some time whenever they want. They are operating, the, the private sector is operating on their own schedule. So they need to, um, examples, right? They need to open 20 stores in Chicagoland this year. Each one of those is calendared out that I'm not going to open that when I get a CO. That doesn't matter to them. It opens based on their corporate schedule. That really means they're sitting on that CO for three weeks, four weeks, six months. I don't know. It's completely up to them. Village has no control. Once we issue that CO, they're good to go as far as we're concerned. The, and it, there it is. It rests on the property owner. Degree of time of uncertainty rests on the building owner. I have no idea. It's also the shortest phase, though. It is true that once we get that CO to when they open, is shorter than any of the other phases beforehand. So, I mean, it's imminent, but I just don't know when. Um, and then, so finally, as you see, I've been doing a full week's cumulative going on here. Week 127 is if you had a four-month delay between the different rounds of review, either at the petition or at permit. And you would have a delay by the village saying, make correction on page 12. <sighs> you didn't make your correction on page 12. Make your correction on page 12. You just burned a month. Two weeks, two weeks. No, I wasn't kidding. Make the correction on page 12. Okay, you know what, fine. You don't wanna make the correction? Great. Staff does not recommend approval. That's, what ha that's how that 
that happens. You really want to move forward to planning and zoning, we will be open and honest with every petitioner and every building applicant. On a building, life safety, make correction, we're not issuing the permit. Planning and zoning, you just wasted time. And as we know, time is money. So it could be up to 127 weeks if you have someone that is not really willing to play ball. So they don't want to participate in the process. They want to think they know what's right and they don't want to listen to staff. And it's like, yeah, it happens. It's few and far between, but it happens that you get really one of those guys. It's okay though. What does that mean in summary? So when I report in some of my weeklies, staff met with a business interested in Villa Park. It will be approximately 110 to 130 weeks, equivalent two to two and a half years before that project grand opens. If it's a full blown, I'm going to buy this, demo it, get the rights, and construct a new building and open. When are they gonna open? Like two years. When are they gonna open? I honestly don't know. And it's a, such a range because everything is slightly different. There's the unique projects, right? You don't actually want a demo. You just need zoning and an interior remodel, right? Well, it's gonna be less than that, but it's not tomorrow. It's not six weeks. Depending on when it is, it might not even be this year as a generic term, right? It might not be this year, it could be next year. So, I say two to two and a half years or 110 to 130 weeks, and then I've got the plus after it. That plus can be any additional amount of time for any potential reason. Financing falls through. Market conditions have changed. The change in the scope is changed. If you're familiar with scope creep, happens all the time. I want to do this. Well, now I want to do this and that. Yeah, we didn't ask for that when you filed your petition for zoning. Now we got to go back through the process again. Land contract issues. Many of the petitioners are not the property owner at the time, and that's okay but they have to have a contract for sale in order to file and be the petitioner. The issues, happens all the time. Legal complications. Someone's selling a piece of property and the LLC didn't file for their state license last year. And they're not a legal entity. It happens, I've seen some stuff. Yeah. So what you just said about having to be a contract purchaser that to yeah. be able to file. Yeah. When we saw that uh, a gentleman come in who wanted to build a cell tower. Yes. He neither owned the property and was not a contract purchaser of the property. Yes. How was it that he was the petitioner? So in that instant, that particular one, the property owner signed off uh, on the application. They, that cell tower, was the applicant. So you can also be, have an applicant as long as the property owner signs off and agrees to all the terms. Okay. That's the same thing. It's very similar to a contract purchaser because a contract purchaser needs to have owner's signature because until they own it, the owner at the time has to agree that they will move forward with this entitlement on my property, assuming that they will get it. So it's just a matter of kind of semantics. He wasn't the petitioner. He was the applicant. He was the applicant, yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, by the way, any external force, I don't even know. Could be anything. Anything can throw a wrench in anything. Then there's the unicorn. No zoning requests are required. <laughs> Building requires no changes. Simple CO process. It's m actually move in ready, like legit move in ready. From when I first hear about this and have that concept conversation to when they grand open, that could be four to six weeks. That is the unicorn. That is not the norm. And I believe, again, the, the population that doesn't do this every day thinks, six weeks? What? That's forever. So rare. So, 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 so rare. We're talking about a new building that has all modernization sprinkled, everything, life safety is good to go, all the stuff, move in, move out. Um, Again, you are familiar with our building stock in here. We have older buildings that need things and need updates. So, Anvil Park, this is by far the unicorn. And we've had some questions, but I will open up to anything you guys have on the zoning slash entitlement process. No, no, it's oh, we got time. I, I guess I have just one question. Absolutely. When we're going back and forth in either, in any of those steps, there's no timeline for them, correct? Mm -hmm. So if they come back and say, here, I'm, I'm ready two years later, 
it, we just have to kind of plop them into the process. Any process of those, right? Yeah. There's we, no, like, you have to get back to us within a year or else we have to redo it. There are uncertain things. So on zoning, so special uses are good for a year. You need to establish that use for a year, otherwise the zoning goes away. Same with the variation. A plan development has three years. Plan development is, like, again, that's special, special use. So you have to do, a, usually it's a much larger engineering submittal, um, architectural submittal. Many of the five to seven story buildings you're seeing that are gonna happen are plan developments because you have to design that thing. So we build in some extra time to accomplish that. So it's a three year. It. Uh, building permit, if you submit and it doesn't get issued in a year, then it's void. Um, so those are just in our code. Um, but if they step in after two years, on a plan development, they can submit their building plans. Yeah, that's good to go. And you can't, like a variance, you can't extend it for one year, right? One yeah, there's extensions built into <clears> our like code we did. as well. Just, that's for what I was just did that. Park. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you had to come right. back, so that was a special use, right? Because that, uh, that was just a variance. 27 West Park was not a special use, was it? No, it's not a special use. It was a those are, no, those are variations. Those are just those are variations, yep. Okay, so after that year, they would he would have had to start over. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Got so it. that's why I like to ask for those things before the expiration date happens. Mm -hmm. So there's not a technical gap. Yep. Occasionally you'll be asked for a conditional uh, certificate of occupancy. Can you talk about some? So yeah. That so uh, temporary CO, temporary. To, uh, can, so that is because they're really only supposed to use in very few instances, and they're based on seasonality. Mm -hmm. They are ready to go from a building perspective. The building is good. All the life safety is good. We are issuing it, but they don't have their final lift of their parking lot. They don't have their final landscaping in. They don't have those things that are weather dependent. We can issue a temporary CO that says, yep, no one's going to get hurt by moving to this building. Go right ahead. And then by this date certain, you must have your final CO issued, meaning you need to stripe that parking lot, put your landscaping in, and everything is to be good. And we'll do another final inspection, which we'll schedule right now for that. So we can do temp, temp COs, um, but again, special case. Why didn't you put your landscaping in three weeks before frost? That kind of stuff. We have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> or it's coming. <clears throat> you're, you're looking really good. Why aren't you doing this right now? That kind of stuff. Yeah. I've, I've got staff that are much better at that than, than I am. Okay. Any other comments, Bear. questions? <laughs> yeah, I'm open. Anything else? Well, great. Thank you, Mark. It was oh, very you, enlightening. Hopefully, um, residents were watching and uh, got a good yeah. idea of, yeah, if you, of what the if process is If you pick up anything, about. talk to staff earlier than you ever thought you mm -hmm. needed to. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, I just noticed on our agenda that we have an adjournment and then public comments. Uh, if it's okay with the board, we'll open up for public comments if there are any. And if none, uh, a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Just Cordova. Second. No Trustee second. Ivano. Uh, all in favor? Do we need a voice vote? Or? Voice vote is fine. Voice vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we will close at 10-2, and we will have our regular meeting at 7 o'clock, the plan time. Thank you. Thanks, Mark.